Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Cuzco, the sixth game in the Steffenfeld City collection from Queen Games. In Cuzco, you play as a Chasky, a messenger traveling to the various villages of Tawantinsuyu, the great Inca Empire. You will study at the university, gaining knowledge, increase your status by decorating your headdress with feathers, and send your priest to the temple. You will buy goods from the market and complete missions. You can also make offerings to the gods to gain their favour. A big thank you to Queen Games for sponsoring this video, but I also rely on the financial support of my Patreon campaign to keep the channel going. So if you want to support me directly, you can do so by becoming one of my supporters at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. In this video, I'm going to be using the components from the classic version of the game. If you have the deluxe version, some of your components will be different. Take the six large triangles and separate them into two piles, one with feathers and victory points and ones with buildings. Place these triangles at random one at a time to create a hexagon, alternating between ones with feathers and ones without. This forms six inner villages, each of which has a building, a victory point value and a feather. Then arrange the four frame pieces around the edge, ensuring that the six outer villages created also have a building, a points value and a feather. Place the wooden disc into the center and place the Cuzco overlay on it, randomly oriented so that each route leads to a village. Place the fire token on top, lining the fire icons up with the roots. Attach the three parts of the action board to the bottom of the main board, with sides facing up according to the number of players. For a two player game, it should look like this. For a three player game, like this. And for a four player game, like this. Place the offerings tiles here and the food tiles here. For each player in the game, place three feathers of each colour on the matching storage spaces. So for a two player game, six of each, for a three player game, nine of each, and for a four player game, twelve of each. This is the common supply. Remove the leftover feathers from the game. Place the board showing the capital Cuzco nearby. And place the display board like this. Sort the god cards by colour and shuffle each pile separately. And place them face down on the matching spaces of the display board. Separate the orange study tiles and the blue farming tiles, turn them all face down, mix them up, and then place them in stacks of equal size on the corresponding spaces of the display board. Draw six tiles of each colour and place them face up on the designated spaces here. Place the ring token on the bridge here. Stack six of the medals at the top of the temple. Take all of the goods tiles. If playing with two or three players, remove one tile of each type and place them back in the box. Then. Randomly place the tiles on the market spaces here. If playing with two or three players, leave the left space of each row empty. Place the game round marker next to the topmost row of the market. Sort the mission tiles by their backs. Set aside the ones with the grey backs. Shuffle the ones with the gold backs and stack them in three roughly equal stacks here. Then take tiles from these stacks and place them face up here. Four tiles in a two player game, five tiles in a three player game and six tiles in a four player game. Each player chooses a colour and takes the following components in that colour. Six circlet tiles, two colour tiles, four priests, ten kipu tiles, three dice, one chasqui, a knowledge marker, a scoring marker and an additional scoring marker. Also take a player aid in your chosen colour. Each player takes a mask board at random. Place your circlet tiles this side up into the corresponding spaces at the top of the mask. Place your colour tiles into the board here and place your priests onto these tiles. Place your 10 kipu tiles onto the spaces in the lower half of your mask. Place your storage board below your mask. Place two offerings here and one medal here. Make sure you take the medal from the box and not the temple. There should be six medals on the temple at the start of the game. Take one feather of each colour and randomly give one to each player. With fewer than four players, return any leftover feathers back to the supply. Each player places their feather into a matching coloured slot at the top of their mask. Take player order tokens based on the number of players in the game. For a two player game use tokens 1 and 2. For a three player game add in the number 3 token and for a four player game use all four tokens. Randomly assign these tokens to the players and place your token into the slot at the top of your mask like this. The player with the number 1 token places their scoring marker on space 0 of the victory points track. Each other player in the order of the numbered tokens places their marker on the next space. Stack the knowledge markers for each player on the zero space of the knowledge track in player order, 
the player with the number one token on top, then the player with the number two token, and so on. Each player places their chassis on the Cuzco overlay at the center of the main board. From the gray mission tiles that were set aside earlier, give one at random to each player, who places it on one of the mission spaces of their mask. Each player then draws four gold missions from the face down stacks, chooses two to keep, and places them on the remaining two mission spaces of their mask. The unchosen tiles are removed from the game. Take two god cards from each pile, shuffle them together face down, and then deal two to each player, setting any remaining ones to one side as a reserve. In a two-player game, take only one card from each pile instead. Look at the two cards you were dealt secretly. If they have the same colour, you must discard one of them, take a replacement from the reserve, and then shuffle your discarded card into the reserve. All players do this until each player has two cards of a different colour. Then, place the reserve pile face up onto the discard pile here. And finally, reveal the top card of each of the god card piles. And with setup complete, you're now ready to play. Cuzco is played over six rounds, with each round consisting of three phases. In phase one, each player rolls their three dice. Then, in player order, players take turns to place their dice on the various action spaces and perform the associated action. In phase two, players may use one study ability and one farming ability from their board. In phase three, you resolve the Cuzco board, starting with the university, then the temple, followed by the market, and then the palace. After six rounds, you perform final scoring, and the player with the most points wins the game. At the start of each new round, each player rolls their dice and places them near their mask. Then, in player order, determined by the player order tokens, each player places one of their dice onto an action space and immediately performs the action. This process then repeats with players placing their second die, and then again until all players have placed all three of their dice. It is allowed to place your die on a space that already has another die on it, either you or another player. However, you can only do this if the value of your dice is less than the value of the lowest dice already there. For example, here, you can only place a die of value 1 or 2 on this space. And if you place a 1, then no other die can be placed there. I'll now go over the actions in detail. The movement action allows you to move your chassis from one place to an adjacent place. In a four-player game, there are two different action spaces, one for moving across a grey stone trail, and the other for moving across a brown rope bridge. In a two- or three-player game, there is only one action space, allowing you to move over either a trail or a bridge. You may only use a route if the pip value of that route is equal to or less than the value of your die. For example, if you place a die of value 4 on the move across a stone trail action, you may only move along this trail or this one. If your chassis moves to a village, take the next kipu tile from the board and place it on the village. You then gain one feather of the colour shown in the village. Immediately slot the feather into a matching coloured slot at the top of your mask. Once placed, a feather cannot be moved. If you already have three feathers of that colour, you may still visit the village and place a kipu tile, but you do not gain a new feather. Removing a kipu tile from your board is a good thing, as it frees up a space for a future study or farming tile. Also, kipu tiles on villages are worth points at the end of the game, but only if your kipu tile is on top. If another player visits the village, they will place their tile on top of yours, and now they will score the points for the village at the end of the game and not you. If you revisit the same village later in the game, you do not place another kipu tile, but you do get another feather, unless you already have three of that colour. Later in the game, it could happen that you have no kipu tiles left on your mask, but you may have one or more below. In this case, you may place a tile from there. If your chaski moves to Cuzco, you do not place a kipu tile. Instead, you gain a fire blessing, which I'll explain later in the video. Also, the next time your chaski moves, you may rotate the overlay however you like, giving you more movement options. These two action spaces are the actions for studying and farming. In a two-player game, it's only one action space, allowing you to either study or farm. Studying allows you to take one of the study tiles from the offer on the Cuzco board, and farming allows you to take one of the farming tiles from the same offer. But the tile you take must be from a space with the same or fewer pips than the value of your die. So if you choose the farming action with a die of value 3, you could take any one of these tiles. You take the tile from the board and place it on an empty space of your mask. You have 12 spaces for these tiles, but at the start of the game only two of them are empty. 
you must unlock the other spaces by removing the Kipu tiles as described earlier. When you place the tile on a space, ensure that you place it at the top of the space, leaving the symbols at the bottom visible. Do not replenish the offer at this time. That only happens at the end of the round. The next action to explain is very simple. You just gain two points. The value of the die you place here does not matter. And the normal rule about only being able to place a die here of lower value is ignored. For example, red could place a die of value five here and gain two points. The exchange action allows you to use the pips on your die in a variety of ways. In effect, you are spending your pips to perform the exchanges listed below, and you can do each of these as many times as you want as long as you have the pips. For one pip, you can slide down either one of your study or farming tiles, or you can gain one point. Gaining a point is the easiest of these three options. You simply move your scoring marker one space forward. If you slide down a study tile, you gain knowledge points as shown on the tile. Each knowledge point advances your marker one space on the knowledge track. If you move to a space where there is already another marker, place yours on top. The knowledge track will be relevant during phase three when you will gain points and be assigned a new turn order based on the position of your marker. If you slide down a farming tile, you gain an amount of food as shown on the tile. Place the food on the bottom of your mask. Food is used to buy goods at the market during phase three. The other exchange options cost two pips each and you have four such options. You can gain one offering, taking it from the supply on the main board and placing it at the bottom of your mask. Offerings are used to play God cards, which I'll explain later in the video. And speaking of God cards, you can use one of these exchanges to take a new God card into your hand. Choose one of the face up God cards from the display and add it to your hand. Then reveal the next card. Or you can take one feather of any color. Slot it into the top of your mask as usual. Or you can relocate one Kipu tile. To do this, take the next Kipu tile from your mask and place it below your board. The space you vacated is now empty, so you can place a study or farming tile there later on. So, for example, you place a die with value 5. You could gain two feathers and one point. The temple action allows you to place one of your priests on a step of the temple. The value of your die determines the step where you place your priest. However, there can only ever be one priest on each step. So if you ever place your priest on a step where there is already another priest, even one of your own, everything below is pushed down one space, filling any gaps. Any priest pushed off the bottom is returned to its owner. For example, you perform this action with a value of five, placing a priest on the fifth step, pushing down the one that was there already, which then pushes down the one below. The red priest on the second step is unaffected. Priests in the temple will award points to the owners during phase three. Also note this icon on the action space. Each time you place a priest, you gain a fire blessing. And I'll explain fire blessings in their own chapter later in the video. The final action to explain is the headdress, which allows you to activate one of your circlet tiles. You may only activate a tile if the number of pips on the tile is equal to or lower than the value of your die. So if you place a die of value three, you can activate any of these circlet tiles. However, the tile must also have feathers in both of its slots. So in this case, this is the only tile that you can activate. When you activate a tile, immediately gain the points depicted on the tile and then flip it over. You also gain additional points based on the round in which you did this. 10 points for rounds one and two, seven points for rounds three and four, and four points for rounds five and six. Activating a circlet tile also gains you a fire blessing, which I'll explain next. We've already seen a number of ways in which you can gain a fire blessing, moving your chasqui back to Cuzco, placing a priest in the temple, and activating a circlet tile. The effects of a fire blessing are summarized at the top of your player aid. Whenever you gain a fire blessing, you first gain either a god card or an offering, and then you gain one knowledge or one food. Gaining a god card I mentioned earlier, choose one from the five on offer and add it to your hand, and then flip the next one face up or gain an offering and place it below your mask. Gaining one knowledge advances your knowledge marker one space forward. And to gain a food, simply take one from the supply and add it below your mask. During phase two in player order, each player may use one ability from their study tiles and one ability from their farming tiles in either order. The position of the tile up or down has no effect on using its ability. 
And notice that I specifically said that you can use one ability rather than one tile. The graphics on the tiles show the ability, and you may have more than one tile with the same ability, in which case you can use both of those tiles together and you are still just using one ability. But note that you cannot combine similar abilities from study and farming tiles. For example, if you choose this ability from your study tiles, you can use both of these with your study ability, but you cannot use this farming tile with the same usage, even though it has the same ability. If you wanted to use the farming tile, you could, but it would count as using your farming ability. When you use the ability on a tile, its position does not change. You just use the tile. All of the abilities are fully described in the addendum. The stone trail tiles work differently if you have more than one of them. If you only had one tile, you may move over a stone trail that has one or two pips. But if you had two of them, the abilities combine together for one movement over a stone trail that has up to four pips. And if you had all three tiles, you may move over any stone trail. The same is true for the rope bridge tiles. And the tiles for studying and farming work in a similar way. If you had one of these tiles, you may take a new farming tile from the Cuzco board from positions one to three. If you had two of these tiles, they combine to allow you to take any of the farming tiles. Having a third one of these tiles provides no additional benefit to this ability. In phase three, you follow the river on the Cuzco board, resolving each location in order. Move the ring token from one bridge to another as you move to each location. First is the university. Each player gains points based on the position of their knowledge marker. So here, red and yellow score one point, and blue gets four. Then you return the markers back to the starting space, with the player who advanced the least on the bottom, and so on. If two or more players advance the same, keep those markers in the same order. Then use the order of the markers in the stack to reassign the player order tokens. The player on top gets the number one token, the next gets the number two token, and so on. This changes the player order with immediate effect, and it will be relevant later in this phase. You then resolve the temple. In rounds one and two, each player gains one point per priest on the temple steps. In rounds three and four, it's two points per priest, and in rounds five or six, it's three points per priest. The player with the most priests in the temple gains one medal from the stack. If there is a tie for the most, the tied player whose priest is the higher gets the reward. In the rare case that there are no priests in the temple at this time, remove one medal from the stack and place it back in the box. The market is the next location to visit. In player order, each player may buy one good from the market row corresponding to the current round. So in round one, you can only buy from this row, in round two, from this row, and so on. To buy a good, spend the indicated amount of food as shown on the tile. Gain the points depicted, and then take the tile, placing it face down below your mask. Buying a good is optional. Skip any players who cannot or do not want to buy. Next is the palace. Each player in order must complete exactly one of the three mission tiles from their board. Each mission depicts the minimum requirements to complete it, and they are all fully explained in the addendum. Importantly, completing a mission requires you only to have a certain thing. You don't need to spend anything. You gain six points for completing a mission, and then you place it face down here. If you are unable to complete one of your missions, choose one of your mission tiles and remove it from the game. You do not gain the six points. Ideally, you want to complete a mission each round, but if you are unable to, remove a mission that you think you are never going to be able to do. Either way, you will now have an empty mission space on your board. Choose one of the mission tiles from the palace, take it, and place it in your empty mission slot. The mission tiles are not replenished yet, meaning that players going later in turn order will have less choice. After the palace, it's time to do any end of round cleanup. If this was round six, skip this and proceed to final scoring. Otherwise, prepare for the next round as follows. Remove any leftover farm and study tiles from the offer and place them in a discard pile nearby. Then refill the spaces with new tiles from the stacks. Remove any leftover missions from the palace and place them back in the box. Then refill the spaces with new mission tiles from the stacks, equal to the number of players plus two. Remove any goods tiles from the market for the current round. Then move the game round marker down one space. Move the ring token back to the start of the river, and then all players take back their dice from the action boards. After six rounds, the game draws to a close. Each player must now complete their remaining three mission tiles, gaining six points for each successfully completed and placing them face down here. 
Any missions that cannot be completed are removed from the mask board and returned to the box. Then, final scoring happens as summarised on the back of the player aid. For each village in which your Kipu tile is on top, you gain the points shown next to the village. Here, blue would gain the points for these three villages. You gain two points for each medal you have. You gain six points if you have all 12 feathers. You gain nine points if you have flipped over all of your circlet tiles. You gain nine points if you have completed all nine missions, that is, you have nine mission tiles in your stack. You gain 10 points if you have no Kipu tiles on or below your board. In other words, you have delivered all 10 of your Kipu tiles to villages. You gain 12 points if you have filled all 12 spaces with farm or study tiles. And you gain 6 points if you bought 6 goods. The player with the most points wins. In case of a tie, the tied player who is earlier in turn order is declared the winner. There are 60 god cards in the game, 12 for each god. If one of the piles ever empties, go through the discard pile for cards of that god, shuffle them and place them face down to form a new pile, turning the top card face up. Each player will start with two of these cards in their hand and can gain more over the course of the game. There is no limit to how many cards you can have in your hand. In the top corners of each card shows the phase or phases in which it can be played. This one can only be played in phase one. This one can be played in phases one or two and this one in phase three or at the end of the game. To play a card, you must spend one offering, returning it from below your mask back to the common supply. You then perform the ability as shown in the top half of the card, and all of the abilities are explained in the addendum. You then place the card on the discard pile. Each player also starts the game with one Inti medal and can gain more during the game by having the most priests in the temple. You may spend one of these medals, removing it from the game, to perform the ability of any of the face-up god cards in the display. For example, in phase one of the game, you could spend a medal to perform the ability of this card, which allows you to move any die to another action space before taking your turn. The card used is then placed on the discard pile, and you flip the next one face-up. At the back of the rulebook are the rules for an additional module which you can use to provide some extra variety to the game. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play Cuzco. Please give the video a like, leave me a comment and subscribe to the channel. And as mentioned earlier, I do rely on the support of my Patreon to keep the channel going. So if you are in a position to be able to do so, please visit patreon.com forward slash gaming rules for exclusive access to the gaming rules community and some additional bonus content. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.